I'm going to go over the basics of the Polaroid Smart Prep uh, programming and just walk through everything one at a time. So for starters, we'll just start at the top. File is where we can load a model or open a scene. Loading a model is where you would pull in any of your STL files. So in this case, I will be pulling in Vinci because Vinci is a good basic model to play with. Okay, from here, we have open scene and save scene. So a scene is basically a, I guess, a mat of sorts where you can add new models and stuff that have a basic scene. So I say save scene. I can say this as Vinci setup. Now, if I choose to do it again, I can open the scene and it will come from right here. Settings will have auto arrange. It would allow for Vinci, if you accidentally moved him, to get moved back into his location in the center. Help, it will go to Polaroid Smart Prep support website. So, library, this will open up a your web browser and open up the Polaroid uh, basic model library on a website where you can download all the models you want. Add model is the same as from load model and file. Filament is where it will link you to Polaroid's website to uh, look at the filament offered that can work with your 3D printer. So today we're going to see what we can do also with Benchy. Just a moment, my recorder is in the way. Oh, I lost Benchy. So we'll add him back in. So to move around on the screen, a left click will let you rotate the platform you're working with. Right click will let you pan so you can move around that way. Scroll wheel will let you zoom in and out. And I think that's it for that. So if you click on the model directly, you'll get these options over here. Uh, copy is obviously it will let you make a duplicate copy of the model that you're working with. I have not figured out what place on desktop does. Reset changes will undo the most recent thing you've done with that model. If you've made it bigger or smaller using the uh, scale or positioning and delete will let you delete the model off. Let's get it to auto arrange again. So we'll get them right in the center. Change color. This will allow your printer to make pauses to where you can choose to change out your filament uh, at various stages during your printing. So if I say insert and have it pause after 33% was done, it would allow me to change from a one filament to another. You can do this as many times as you would like. Once you have set up what you want to have, I'm going to remove it since I do not want it for this print. When you're ready, you hit the print button. You have the option of enable support. This will make small little scaffolding uh, across all of your, uh, your model. Not all of your models will need it, but some do, especially with some large overhangs that you would have trouble with. Uh, filament material, you have what Polaroid offers PLA, PETG, PWood, silk, glow in the dark, and the multicolor filaments. And then you also have three levels of quality for the print uh, draft, normal, and high. Going into advanced settings, you'll see the print quality of, in microns. Smaller is better. 
print speed, how fast the print head will move. If you're trying to do a high quality print, it's also recommended to go slower. Bed temperature will, you can change on your own based off of what you want. It can go as low as 50 degrees or up to 100. I would say keep it around 70 to 65. The types of supports. If you choose to enable support, you have a choice of lines or grid. Uh, lines will just be a vertical type support. Grids will have cross, cross section supports. Create support from minimum angle. We'll say that if you're hanging over by at least 30 degrees or however big your angles are, it will create a support underneath. The density of filament and supports is how thick the supports will be. And create supports with direct punch to bed. If you're needing supports that come from the ground up, I would always check that. Shelf thickness is how thick do you want the outer wall of your print to be. Fill density. Um, how much space you want to have inside of your model as it's printing. So if you want it to be completely filled print where it will be a big solid block of whatever you're printing, make it 100. Um, most of the time you can get away with 15, 10 to 20%. Keep it around 15 is fine. Um, the number of layers at the beginning and end of a print is how many prints it will do as a solid layer and fill instead of following the fill density. So it will be thicker on the top and bottom to give you a little more space to work with. Uh, six to eight is what I would recommend, but play around with it and see what works for you. The model brace or base, you have none and brim. A brim is where it will make the uh, flat outer outline on the bottom of your base. For your larger wide base prints, I would recommend this for something that's small um, it's not necessary. There are other options in Curin, such as raft or skirt. Uh, if you use the play, if you use the smart prep software, it always adds a sideline that kind of acts like a skirt to get the print readied. Um, for Benchy, you can add a brim, uh, but to test your printer out, sometimes it's fun to not use a brim. I always recommend it for the wider based items. So like a cube or anything that is long and flat. Okay, once you're done with that, you hit the print button. A print file will be generated. It will give you estimated time it will take to print and how, how much of your filament it will use. Save it. Wherever you fill, it will save as a G code and give it a name. And then save that G code to a SD card or a USB stick to put onto your printer. Hope this helps some people.